Hey guys, Bass Angler Cub here with a goodbye video. I'm not saying goodbye to YouTube or anything. I'm saying goodbye to this pond at pond or lake, depending on what you want to refer it as. Uh, I have fished here for many, many years. So, two reasons why I'm saying goodbye to this area is because one, I fished it for many years. And two, the increase of people showing up to this lake uh, really does kill the vibe of coming here. And uh, so I'll be end up traveling to different locations and everything, looking for new ponds. But for definitely for this area, this is the last time I'm gonna make a video. So. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoy the video. If you are new to my channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit the like button. If you're enjoying the content, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Take one last look at the ground. I might have to go to my uh, Yeah, I have no idea where my bullet weight went. So, I'm gonna try read this. Let's see what happens. I know I just said we lit, but I have no idea what happened to my bullet weight. Of course, why I had it on there. But we might have to go with my Texas, uh, Texas. Wow, I can't even speak. Throw this around for a little bit, see what happens. I'm so far, I'm not liking it. So, we might have to go to my bass jet, guys. because I lost my bullet weight. So what we're gonna do is toss that right out there. Did it fall in my pocket? Nope, did not. Probably we Yeah. Because I lost my bullet weight. So we're just going to switch off, back off to uh, the bass jig. It seem, bass jigs seem to be working for me today. So. We did my intro at home.
There's one. Not a big one, but this one to start off the video. I figured they will be in more of the Ike. Like in the shadows, a little bit more. Let's see if that's another one. Yeah, I said in the shadows. Be quiet. <laughs> but they're probably gonna be hiding up alongside uh, the seaweed, the lily pad. Well, we don't really have lily pads. It's just it's like. I don't know what you would call this. Uh, overgrown seaweed, something like that. But most likely they're gonna be more near trees and overgrown vegetation. That's what I'm gonna call it, overgrown vegetation. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, bass jerks have really been doing it this year. Uh, typically, I use lipless crankbaits on hot days, but they just haven't been hitting uh, rattle traps, regular crankbaits. I've used regular crankbait. Um, there's another one. A little toss but like on hot days uh they're gonna be pushed up more shallow or more deeper so having like a bass jig probably a crankbait is gonna be your best bet on very hot days even if it's tough Let's throw these around, you know, because you never, you never know what's going to hit. Looks like they put rocks down here to help out with uh, putting kayaks and other small boats in. So I'm not doing long casts, I'm just doing short casts. Let's just see what would, what's going to hit. But I'm staying near the sea, uh, overgrown vegetation here. See if anything will strike, like will come out and strike. The good thing about bass jigs too is that um, unlike most other baits, you can rip this through uh, vegetation and all that. So, so if you know you're going towards vegetation, just do like a little uh, pull up motion, jerk motion, and then typically it will push itself right through that vegetation. And that's one of the reasons why I started loving bass jigs, honestly, because they're very good for that. I mean, you can use a drop shot, but you still, but you're gonna run into that problem of uh, of them. 
Well, if you're gonna use like, well, let me rephrase that. If you're gonna use a weighted Texas jig, uh, the bullet weight itself most likely is gonna get hung up a lot more. So, so really, th if you're gonna use a weighted Texas jig, really figure out where you're gonna throw. On oh, something moved it. But um when it's a hot day like today, we're talking like about hundred degrees for today. Fish slow. Don't don't rush it. Nine times out of ten, you're not really going to get uh, much bites. But when you're starting to fish slower, you're giving the fish a chance to see the bait, uh, react to it a lot better. You, you ask the up the chance of you uh, landing fish. So, well, take it slow. Now, if it's like 70 degree weather, I would say fish medium. Either way, don't try to fish too fast in any type of weather. I'm good, are you? Good. Any luck? Yeah, I got 12. Nice. Thank you. Like right there should be like a good spot. Like right in where that shade line is. I mean, they could be in one spot that you've already cast, but at the same time, they could be at that point where you didn't get them uh, aggressive enough to attack your lure. So sometimes you want to throw right where they're at or a little bit further from where they're at. And that's the idea that you want to do. So with me constantly throwing towards the uh, tree lines, and where the shaded areas, even though it's like sunny, I had some clouds, but.
but I have a feeling something's gonna be right here. So let's see my hunch pays off. Cause this is the only bass jig I brought. Oh. Thought something went after it. I felt a thud. That one. Oh, that's a decent sized one. Oh my god. Yo. Look on how he ate that. Hold on, let me see if I get. I mean, look at that. It is in his mouth. Barely even hooked. Decent size. Say about a high one pounder. Oh. Thought I had another one right there. Might have to retie this here in a second. There's another one. Oh, it got off. Oh, that's a tiny one. Oh my God. The tiniest one I have ever caught, guys. Set. Oh my God, guys. <laughs> No, I was impressed, but that's a tiny bass, guys. I think that was the one that decided to try to run with the bait. Yeah, I should have taken a picture for my Instagram.